Registered Phenomena Code 478 Object Class Neutralized Hazard Types None Containment Protocols The item is to be stored at a stable temperature and dry environment. Approximately 21 degrees Celsius and no more than 60% relative humidity. RPC-478 is currently contained in the east wing of St. John the Hesychast on Vesuvius, Italy. RPC-478 is a damaged 19 by 11.2 cm painting made from watercolor, ink, and gouache on paper, mounted on an olive wood frame. The painting depicts a colorful landscape scene, including mountains, trees, and a lake illuminated by sunset. A church is visible in the distance, as are two figures on a boat and a child on a path. The focal points of the painting are the natural features. Stylistically, the work is undoubtedly inspired by the work of Albrecht Altdorfer of the Danube School. Distinguished by the prominence of nature and how it is represented, as well as human activity represented in nature. These are among the first paintings to encompass natural landscapes as focal points. The item currently demonstrates no anomalous properties. All accounts of anomalous activity have been recorded and maintained by the monks of St. John. Due to the significant time span that the item has remained inactive, removal of its RPC designation is under consideration. A record of events as provided by St. John the Hesychast, translated from Latin. Record of Painting 478, 1532 Today a new curiosity was brought to us. Found in a damaged home, it was surrounded by unholy markings. Two men found in the room were taken and punished righteously. The item, a painting, is said to be a doorway to another place. Myself and Brother Eater will take charge of it. Jabez The men confessed that they helped a known heretic, Amos Valerius. They created the object together. Then he touched its face with his hands, and he entered within the painting, and they sealed him inside. I prayed over the item for hours, but I did not feel God's presence within it. I then brushed it with holy water. Eater did the same, and we donned our communal robes in preparation. Father Madaya then blessed us, and we began our work. Eater touched it first. On its face he placed his hands and then he began to melt within. Then he disappeared, and the painting remained unchanged. I followed him. There was no pain entering. When I opened my eyes once more, I saw that we had entered into the painted world. All was colorful and bright. The nature surrounding us was much larger than us. All movements felt unnatural, as if we were walking slowly to balance against a strong wind at our backs. As I looked around myself, I saw Brother Eater standing with me, and behind us both was a towering tree. At its base were two handprints, each one of our sizes. We both turned to the tree and placed our hands on the prints. With that we were taken back and returned to the abbey. I fell to my knees and began gagging. I was sickened by the place. Eater complained of a headache and took to bed. I know that place was made in the absence of God and His love. Mankind should not take to making lands as if they were the Lord. I knew that we must return to find Valerius and have him retire from that place. Jabez. Before we returned to the unclean place, both Brother Eater and I rested and prepared for three days and nights. Eater had been overtaken by his head pain for the full night following our first entrance, but he is now feeling strong again. We underwent our blessings and entered the painting once more. This time we were prepared to venture out to find Valerius. We entered by the towering trees again and began down the path. Eater and I walked the path for three hours before finding the signs of Valerius. We found footprints that had been left by a lake in the sand. It appeared as if he left the lake after a time and retreated into the forest. At this time my head was beginning to throb from the sickening colors, so we sat to rest. The animals by the lake behaved almost like animals, but Eater and I could tell it was but a sick imitation of the natural world. After my head cleared, we continued on. 
We walked for a time down the second footpath. Through the tall trees we found a clearing, and in the middle was Valerius. He was sitting on the ground cross-legged, his head bowed and hands folded. We approached him and spoke aloud. Valerius, what is this place? Eater asked him. Valerius answered, A place where I can live and love in the eyes of the Lord, without the judgment of man. Do not rejoice. This place is without God, Valerius, Eater said. Return home. I cannot return from here. You know not of this place, or how the Lord's love fills my heart. Leave me, Valerius replied. We shall return again, Valerius. To be in this place is dishonorable, as written in Leviticus. You know this within your heart. We left Valerius sitting in the field to think on our words. We return to the tall trees and back to the abbey. In a short time we shall find him again to convince him further. Jabez We prepared and returned to the painted world once more. Though we searched near and far, we could not find trace of Valerius. We found others, however. Each had come to be within the confines of the space. These citizens lived on the land, each wandering in sin through the landscapes. None would heed the word of the Lord as we taught it. We continued to enter the painting many times in search of Valerius, to end this sinful display. Time seemed to move faster within the painting, compared to our world. Each time Eater and I entered, the trees had grown taller, and the townsfolk had aged greatly. We found that Valerius had visited each citizen that we met, but none would tell us where he was in their misguided love for him. They said that our persistence caused Valerius many great torments. Jabez. We entered the painting's world again, and though I fell ill from it, we continued. Eater and I entered a cluster of shelters to spread the word of the Lord and to teach the people of uncleanliness. The people turned to us and they said, If you wish to learn why we love this place so, come to the church. And so we followed them. We walked through the trees to a stunning white church. The bells rang out above us as we approached and all the people followed us. I could feel my sickness banished as we stepped inside. Within the church was a beautiful painting of Jesus, that which grace I had never before been blessed to see. I approached the altar and fell to my knees in prayer. Then Valerius spoke out from behind us. This is our church. We have built it with our hands. It is magnificent, I said. This place is beautiful, and if you let me, I will show it to you. Valerius replied. Then we walked together to a window in the church. Through it, I could see the mountains high above, and from them flowing waters of a river cascaded into the lake. Valerius took us outside to a rocky path, and we walked up the mountain together. We stopped to rest in the shade of a tree. We sat together and looked out at the landscape below. The sun shone through the clouds and radiant beams, dancing on the forest floor. The river caught the light in brilliant colors. Valerius turned to us and said, Do you see? It is hallowed here. Eater answered, I see this place and its glittering promises, but this place was not made by the Lord. Do you not know why I built this place? Why I could not stay in Rome? Valerius replied, I was to be hung. And your charges were well proven, as was your complicity, Eater said. Valerius hung and shook his head, shedding a tear. To stay was to die. My beloved did not wish for that. Eater replied, To die for your crimes. Now you have built a place to sin freely and wrestle the sacred scripture to your own meaning. Valerius said, I have built a place to worship and love one another in peace. Is this so evil? Eater answered, You ran from the justice of the church and denied the laws of Christendom. Now you are here and have defiled this land with your relations." Valerius did not reply. Eater and I left Valerius and returned from the mountain to pass by the church once more. We stopped and I prayed for Valerius. Then we walked to the tall trees and returned to the abbey. I feel myself torn. This place is not of the Father, by whom all things were made, but of man. It sprouts from unnatural powers. Could a place so graceful not be a gift from God?
or am I being tempted by the allure of sin? To stay in a place made from unsanctified powers must be to be unclean, is it not? Jabez I talked to Father Medaya of my concerns. He discussed with me at length about Valerius and his troubles, and the reasons for his anathema from Rome. The brothers would not stand to let Valerius live in this place and would sooner carry out his final sentence. I left feeling no less conflicted. I will speak to Brother Eater and convince him to let Valerius confess, and give him the opportunity to be forgiven for his past crimes in the Lord's eyes. I see no other way to guide Valerius safely. Jabez. A time later we entered the world on a starlit night, and began our search once more. We found Valerius sitting with a man by the lake. He had aged greatly. As we approached, Valerius stood to face us. Why have you returned? Valerius asked. Because this place is sinful, Valerius. To live like this is to be bastardized in the eyes of God. This place is unclean, Eater answered. How could a place so full of love and beauty be unblessed in the eyes of the Lord? Valerius replied. There is nothing but peace in this world, made in his vision. We are harming none in being here together. To this, Eater said, for you to have such enjoyment in this makes it all the worse. You are sinning against your own body. I be well that you do not see the shame in this. Eater and I tell you truthfully, the Lord's pure love flows through this world. By his word that binds this place, I cannot leave, Valerius replied. Eater answered, not only your body, but your soul is disgraced by this place and this uncleanliness must be driven out. Valerius said, I have wandered and loved in this world for years. I have grown and helped those around me and been at peace. Why will you not let us rest in our innocent passion and worship? Eater replied, It is our duty, for this place is unholy. Return with us to confess and face your crimes, and we will never again enter this place. Refuse, and we will have no choice but to destroy it. To this, Valerius looked to his companion, and they exchanged a lengthy embrace. Then Valerius returned to the towering tree with us. He placed his hand on his surface first and faded away. We did the same and returned to the abbey. When I opened my eyes once more, Valerius was not there. At once, Eater and I attempted to return into the painting's world, but our efforts were left unanswered. To all our touches, the painting remained still, and we could not return. The painting is now barren of the powers it had possessed. It can be found on the eastern wall of the abbey. I mourn for Valerius. I did not know the ramifications we set forth. Jabez.